If you're on a ketogenic or low carbohydrate diet, or you're just trying to eat healthy and you're looking for something that's nutritionally complete, easy to prepare and tastes good, I may have something for you. If you're interested, keep watching. Just before we begin, I'd like to thank the people at Health Code for sending me samples of their products so that I could share it with you. So what we're going to do is go down to my kitchen table today where I'll go over the key features for this product. We'll go over what you can do with it as far as uses. I'll go over how to use it and prepare it and we'll talk about its economics. All right, just before we take a closer look at the two products that Health Code sent me, let me show you what else came with it little fold-out manual with a little information, well, more information about the product and some suggestions on how you can use it. And a shaker bottle. And these are the type of things that has that spring inside that helps to mix it up. We'll talk more about this in a minute and how it relates to being used out in the woods. All right, so these are the two products that were sent. One is chocolate macadamia nut and the other one is creamy vanilla. They have very similar nutritional uh, listings on the back and let me show you. There's a lot of information all over this bag. Now, I'm not going to give you all of what's inside of the bags themselves, but I will give you the highlights. And of course, I will provide links to where you can find out more about these products in the video description below. And you should be. If you're looking for a product or a meal or a replacement like this, then you're likely going to want to know as much about the product before you purchase it as you can. But let's just talk about some of the key features of what's inside of it. So, so what's inside starts with 27 grams of smooth, creamy, non-grainy protein from whey, egg whites, and hydrolyzed grass-fed collagen. It has a one-to-one -one ratio of healthy fats to protein. It has grass-fed collagen, apple cider vinegar, digestive enzymes, probiotics, and fiber for the gut. It has the ideal ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. It has up to 50% of the recommended daily value of vitamins and minerals. No added sugars, no sucrose, no maltose, no sugar in any form at all. No GMOs and no artificial ingredients. And that's just the beginning. Like I said, I won't give you all the information, but you can look that up. I would highly recommend you do so. Okay, so let's just talk about a few more of the key features for this. So in the opening to this video, I suggested that this would be good for anybody who is on a ketogenic diet or a low carbohydrate diet, or is otherwise just looking to have a healthy meal replacement product available to them. And uh, this will fit all of those things, but why it works out so well for somebody on a ketogenic or low carbohydrate diet is the ratio of the macros, the proteins, the fats, and the carbohydrate that make this keto friendly is probably the best way to describe it. And uh, let me just describe that. So if you're on the ketogenic diet, then you'll know that there is a, a recommended ratio of those three things, the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates, so that your body will go into ketosis and start burning fat rather than curb glucose in your system. The average or the recommended that I see most often are ratios like this. Your diet should consist of 70% fats, only 5% carbohydrates, and 25% protein. So that's what the definition of a ketogenic diet is as far as the macros go. The health code products are slightly different. I'm going to refer to them as an improved keto macros. So again, just slightly different, and they work out to be 66% fat, 4% net carbohydrates, and 29% protein. So it's actually less carbohydrates in this than is recommended in a regular ketogenic diet, slightly less in fats, but slightly more in protein. Newer research is suggesting this is a better ratio for anybody looking to be on a low carb or ketogenic diet because one of the things that's been known about the older, oh, it's not that old, but the ketogenic diet is it does not emphasize the requirement of protein as much as it should. Lots of research out there. The website is full of links to the research that these products are based on if you're interested in going deeper into that. And the last thing I'll say about key features, and this is kind of key to me, certainly, 
is it has a two-year shelf life. So as long as it's kept dry and uh, uh, no moisture allowed to get at it, it will keep for two years for, and still be perfectly fine. So these products are designed to be a complete meal replacement. But of course, I want to know what else could I do with this rather than just use it as a meal replacement. So what I tried it and used it for was a post-workout recovery drink. Uh, it works great like that. Now, there are a lot of post-workout recovery drinks on the market. Most of them are very high in protein. You will notice that very few of them have any fats included. And I know now that the research says that if you're trying to gain protein in your diet as and to ass assist you with your workouts, you should also have, actually you need also to have fat in that drink. And of course, this does have it, healthy fats. And this is full of healthy fats. What else could I use it? Well, for me, being out in the woods, and of course, that's what you'd be most interested in, is how does it apply to being out in the woods? Well, one of the things I've done with this is put a serving of this, which is two scoops. We'll talk more about what's in a serving in a few minutes' time, in a small screw top container, and it goes in my lunch bag. And what I'm keeping it there for is a backup meal. So if, for whatever reason, I, get to, I have to stay out longer than expected, maybe uh, overnight, then I have food that I can count on being in my meal bag just in case. So I think it's great for that. You can put as many as you want in your meal bag. Of course, I have enough for one complete meal, but I could add more to that if I wanted to. So backup food, I think that's ideal reason for it. You, don't you can put it in your bag. And because of its shelf life, you don't have to worry about it going bad while it sits there. Um, one of the other things I found is that although this is a complete meal in a single serving, it's still only 400 calories, and that information is on the back of the bags as well. 400 calories. Now, a lunch maybe, but a dinner at night? No, I don't think so. But I don't know that I would want to eat more than one serving of this in the evening time. But what I can do with these is add them to something else. So this could form a part of my more complete, longer meal that I might have in the evening because I've got to replace a lot more calories that out in the woods than I would necessarily around home because, you're, of course, you're working harder and burning more of your calories. So, yeah, as a supplement to other food. Now, here's the fun thing. This is where I started to have a lot of fun with these. It can be used as an ingredient in other recipes. So what do you mean by that, Mark? Well, one of the things that I've done, not so much with this one, well, actually, I'll, that's not true. There is something I've done with this that's different. This one, I wondered as a creamy vanilla powder, could I use it to uh, add to my uh, coffee? Not, now, normally I drink coffee black, but sometimes you want to add creamer to your coffee. And anyone who adds, takes creamer with them into the woods, uh, who tr is looking for a powdered creamer, will know that it's not easy to do to get something that still has all the nutrition of a good creamer and no sugar added, right? So uh, a lot of them have sugar added, as you're likely aware. What I normally do when I'm making a cup of tea in the woods and I want to add milk to it because I do drink my tea with milk is I have milk powder. But the thing with milk powder is you have to pre-mix it in a little bit of water before you add it to your tea. If you don't, it just doesn't mix up and it all floats and looks as if the milk has gone bad. Well, in fact, that's true of this as well. You do have to mix it up a little bit in some cool water uh, before you add it to your coffee or your tea or whatever else you want to do with it. So yeah, you, you, there is, and we'll talk about more about tricks and, and tips for mixing this up in a moment. Um, how about a cup of hot chocolate? So if you're out in the woods and you're not looking for coffee or tea, but you'd like to have some hot chocolate, could you use the chocolate macadamia to make a cup of hot chocolate? Absolutely you can. There are some tricks to this, and again, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, desserts, here at home, more, than, more so than out in the woods, I have made puddings out of this as well as this. And one of the neat things about the Health Code people is now that I'm on their mailing list, once a week, usually, maybe sometimes two or three times a week, they send me an email with links to their most current recipes on how you can use these for things like desserts or power shakes or other types of meal replacements. 
they not only send recipes for that, but they send complete recipes for healthy meals that don't involve these. So, you know, whether it's pork chops or chicken or anything else, they've come up with some great recipes for to help people out and then maybe using some of those recipes in the woods at some point. So, yeah, there's a number of things you can use these things for more than just as a meal replacement or even as a snack. You can use them to whiten up your coffee or your tea. You can use them and make a complete hot drink out of them all by themselves. Okay, let's talk about how you use these products. Okay, what are some tips and tricks and recommendations for actually using these products? In other words, how do you blend them? How do you mix them together? Well, Health Code recommends, and actually they show it right on the back of their bag right here, that the two ways that they recommend is either with the shaker mug here or with a blender either a personal sized or a full size blender maybe magic bowl or whatever it is you have and that will do a great job but that's not the only way you can uh, mix these things together now i also wanted to know how well they would mix together while I'm out in the woods because of course I'm not going to have an electric blender with me and I'm also not likely to carry this with me in the woods just for the purposes of mixing these drinks up but um, I'll tell you what I have done and what does work so Nalgene bottle, which I'm likely going to have one either uh, have one anyway, either a metal one or excuse me, either a plastic one like this or a metal bottle one. I'm going to have some type of water bottle with me. I chose this for an example just because it's lightweight, it's common, a lot of people have it. One thing you're going to need though is a wide mouth version of whatever it is you want to use. Well, you can take your shaker mug out. That's the spring that you use in the shaker mug, and it will drop down inside my Nalgene and I can mix my drink up with this. Now, of course, if you're using this for your water supply as well, you're going to have to rinse it out with clean water after you mix your drink up because otherwise you're going to have a little residue left behind in this. So I think that works out really well in the woods. All you really have to do is take that spring with you and however much of this product it is you plan on carrying with you. There is a <clears throat> There is a device that you can carry with you that is battery operated. Um, I don't know that I would carry this very often. I'm showing this because it is an option and it is something that works really effectively. And that is one of these power operated little hand blenders. And these things do work really, really well. This one is a USB type C rechargeable. I've learned from experience in using these though, is that you do have to have a little bit of practice with them because they are quite powerful. And if you mix it in a mug or something that ha already has too much fluids in it, it tends tends to want to really froth it up and uh, come up over the side. So I wanted to show you that, but it's not something that I carry with me. But what I do do out in the woods quite often is I'll make something, and this is where the bushcraft part of it comes in, I guess you might say. How about a little whisk made from the top of a pine tree? So this is just, well, you can see the branches pulled back and tied together to make a little whisk. Very effective. Nice little easy craft to do. If you're interested, at some point I can show a video on making these things. And this is one I've used for even longer. This is also the top off of a fir tree, This, in this case. And this is a Scandinavian type of a whisk known as a var. Tavar, T-V-A-R, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. Very easy to make, just takes a few minutes, you find the right tree. More often than not, they come with four branches, but occasionally they'll come with five branches. And these are incredibly effective as using as a whisk. You could carry a metal whisk with you, but it's much more fun to make something like this. So what I'll do is I'll take my GSI mug or something similar, maybe one of my titanium mugs, I will put the amount of water that I want in. There's been 500 mils. I'll probably put in uh, 250 mils or one cup of water. I'll put in however much of the powder that I want to put in, one scoop, two scoop. We'll talk about the difference in a moment. And once the powder in there is together, then this will go in and I sized the tines on this to fit in this mug. And all I have to do is just spin it. Incredibly effective. Now you can do the same thing with this one as well. Just spinning it back and forth. 
It'll froth up quite well, and then I've got my drink mixed together. So those are just a couple of ways that you can mix this up while you're out in the woods without having to carry either something electric or battery operated or that shaker mug, which it really is only used for one thing all at all. A couple of tips on using this, and some of them I've already mentioned. If you're looking to make hot chocolate, then the idea is put your powder and your water or milk, you can use milk if you want, uh, in your mug before you apply it to heat. And then you're going to end up heating this over whatever it is, alcohol stove, gas stove, over a fire, small wood stove, so that it blends with the water or milk, your liquid, before it heats up. Because what I found is trying to get the powder to blend into something hot, like right in my coffee, um, doesn't work out quite so well. Or even pouring hot water in on top of it, it clumps together and I find it hard to get it unclumped. So it actually does blend better in cold fluids than it does in hot. But then you heat it up and you've got your hot chocolate. Nutritionally, very rich hot chocolate at that. Um, I've also, as I mentioned, mixed it with other things to make desserts. But here's something I've been experimenting with to see if I could come up with a snack is the best way to say it for the woods. A, a, a fat bomb, a nutritional snack of some type. So I've tried things like how thick can I get this to mix up? Something that is uh, would freeze well or even be solid at room temperature. Well, I haven't gotten to the room, the solid at room temperature with this product, although there are some uh, ideas I'm working on. Maybe you have some suggestions as well. But one thing I've done is mix this with peanut butter, sugar-free, of course, peanut butter. And I can come up with something really very thick. And it's something that I can put in a squeeze tube or a little container with a screw top that I can spoon out and I've got a really rich, quick snack all mixed together. And let me tell you, this chocolate macadamia nut mixed with peanut butter, nice, really, really nice. I've done it with or without uh, no calorie sweeteners and it works either way. I, can, I could eat it either way. All right, so we have talked about what this is all about, this product, what are its key features. We've talked about ways it can be used. We've talked about how to actually bend it together. Of interest to most people is, what about the economics? What is it going to cost? So let's do that next. All right, so let's talk about the economics of using the health code meal replacement. Well, to start with, you need to know what this is worth. So these are not inexpensive. They are $60 a bag. That sounds like a lot of money until you start doing the math on it. Each of these bags has 15 servings, complete servings. Each serving is two scoops. The scoop is inside with this. So that works out to $4 a meal, and each meal being 400 calories. Just try to keep those figures in mind for a moment. So uh, that's right, about $4 a meal. Now, you can get cheaper meal replacements for sure, but I don't think you're going to find anything anywhere that has the nutrition as well as the quality of ingredients that this does. So in fact, I did a look, little looking around. I was looking at snack bars or, or bars that I could carry with me. There are a few products on the market that are very well uh, likely to be used by people on a ketogenic diet. They have no sugar, they have good amounts of fat, they have good amounts of protein, but you know what? That's They're still no cheaper and they're still not the same calorie density. So they, the bar is maybe $3, this, at least for us here in Canada, or $4 in some cases that I've seen them, but they still are not 400 calorie bars. So we, we have to kind of do it on a calorie to calorie comparison, and that's important that we look at it that way. If we look at this as a 200 calorie snack, then you get 30 snacks out of this. 200 calories is still a fair snack. You get uh, 30 snacks out of this, and that brings each one of those down to $2. And I don't think you'll find a nutritional snack bar that has the same type of ingredients and healthiness to it for $2. I'm, I'm actually very sure of that. So, all right, so that's as far as comparing it to snack bars, but what about comparing it to some of the other meal replacements or powders that are available? So I will be honest, I have not looked at 
everyone that is out there, but I looked at everyone I could find information for, primarily through Amazon or other distributors that have products like this. And after comparing them to this product, one of the things I've discovered is, and, and again, I had to try to compare it as close as possible, so not just a typical meal replacement, but one that is keto-friendly or has this type of a ratio, um, the macros of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. There are a few out there, but when I did the breakdown and how many meals you get in the bag and how many calories per serve, or how many servings in a bag, how many calories per serving, and then run that through the cost, I have not found anything that even compares with this. This, in that case, is cheaper than all of them. And yes, I know you're putting more money out initially, but you're getting more for your money with this product. Okay, I think I've given you enough information to at least give you some idea should you look at this a little further. I think it's time to wrap this video up. Yeah. All right. I know the question you're asking is, well, what does it taste like? Like, am I going to enjoy this? And the answer from me is, at least for me, is yeah, absolutely I do. I prefer the chocolate macadamia nut. No question about that. It is just a richer, darker, and I like good dark chocolate to start with. The creamy vanilla, I do like it, but I tend to use it more as a creamer for something else or mix it into other things and adding flavors to it. Uh, not because it isn't a good flavor, it's because it's uh, just a little plain for me, but you know, everyone has their own preferences. The chocolate macadamia nut or the creamy vanilla, you can't go wrong with either one. Okay, just in case you were wondering whether or not you want to put the money out for one of these products, the health code have given me a discount code that I can offer to you, 15% off if they use the discount code MYoung. I'll make sure this is in the link below as well, as well as the links to where you can purchase this from. Uh, maybe it's not for you, but if you're on a low carb or a ketogenic diet and just trying to eat more healthy and you've been looking for a product, something like this, not to use just at home, but out in the woods, which is where I intend on using this more than anywhere else, this is something to at least consider. And hopefully that 15% off will just sweeten the deal a little bit. All right. Mm. It's good, it really is. Okay, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to put them in the comments section below. Again, the, all the information for this product as well as where you can get it and the discount code will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.